Hi guys, this is a video about uh, fault finding and battery drain in the Mitsubishi Magna 2002. And basically, my battery went flat after I drove through a lot of flood water, flash flooding. And I have had a couple of flat batteries in the months before this as well. But I thought something different had happened because of the flood water. So I took the battery out, it was flat. And I got 12.8 uh, ohms. All right, so that's gonna draw about one amp of current with everything switched off. So that's really low resistance across the battery terminals. And I measured that, I sort of had all the car doors open trying to dry it out and clean out the car and things like that. And I thought, what happens if I close the start closing doors. So I'm going to do that right now. When I was driving in the flood water the tailgate to the wagon was still a crack open because it's a bit hard to shut and I thought maybe that was the problem. So now I've closed the, the back the, the wagon door and the passenger front door and you can see it's still 12.7 ohms so it actually wasn't either of those things sometimes I found that number jumps up a little bit up as high as 60 now I'm going to close the driver's door let's measure it again this is just measuring the resistance on the, on the multimeter. And now you see it goes all the way up to about 1.5 kilo ohms. You might not be able to see it, but there's a little K next to the ohm sign. So pay attention to the scale. So that's about 1,100 ohms. And that's not enough, I don't think, to cause any significant battery drain. Um, it's never going to be infinite number of ohms because there's a computer and everything in there, but let me show you what I think the culprit is. Obviously, if I can get the camera out of the tripod. So here's the front door. Sorry, we're a little bit zoomed in. And here's the little switch. I have to change focus. The little switch here, which uh, if I grab a screwdriver, I'm trying to film this in one take, so you have to bear with me. I left the screwdriver on the table. Now if I grab a screwdriver I can just take this out one screw and I can peel off this rubber thing and I'm guessing I just am um, sorry about the focus famous Panasonic autofocus but basically I can just squeeze this in I think and pull this section out and that's the switch and I'll just replace that switch and hopefully that's fine so when it's in the, the on position it's putting a, a huge load on the battery so there's probably a soft or some kind of minor short circuit in here when it's which is facing out, which is on. And what happens is it tries to turn on this little light here, or the cabin light, which I've got turned off anyway. Um, so whether it got a bit of water in it through flood waters, I'm not sure, but it was already, I think, a bit faulty. I thought it was me leaving the cabin light on too long, but I think there's actually um, a problem with the switch. I'm very, very confident. So I'll be ordering a new one of these replacing it and luckily it's not uh, because I drove through the flood waters luckily it's not anything too serious in the engine which it could
could be because I found a lot of water down in there which is fairly high up and if you follow, it's a bit hard to see, if you follow the positive lead it actually goes all the way to the you're not going to see it but to the bottom of the engine bay, I should have done manual focus and there's like a little, I don't know if it's a starter motor or condenser but it's right down near the level of the oil sump just above that and so that would have got pretty wet and there's all kinds of connections there so I'm really lucky that I haven't damaged that so don't drive through floodwaters uh, and if you do check the uh, check your door switches because that could be the problem instead of something big in the engine like I was worrying about thanks for watching